Hi, Neil. I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. An absolute pleasure to be able to speak to you today. How are you? Okay? Yeah, good. Thanks. You're all right. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Um, so what a whirlwind this film is. <laughs> Maybe for people who yeah. don't know anything about it, uh, you know, without obviously giving anything away either. Um, can you just give us a little glimpse? What can they expect if they go and see Boo? Uh, well, it's sort of about a man who's returning to a misbegotten town seeking vengeance on his former associates. And um, he sort of visits them all in turn and they're surprised because they, they don't expect to see him again. And um, he sort of works his way up through them to, to eventually confront the merciless kingpin of the, the, the local area. <laughs> and um, it's certainly not for the faint hearted, uh, but I'm sure even when you read the script, you already had an idea of just what kind of film this was going to be. So what was the appeal for you? And, you know, was it kind of, you know, something you had to think about? Like, oh, can I take this on? Or, or what did you feel when you first read the script? Uh, well, it was, I knew Paul Andrew Williams, who was the director, and I wanted to work with him for years, and we threatened to work with each other for a long time. So it was about that as much as anything. And then, of course, you know, when the script comes through, you go, oh, this is the kind of, part you always wanted to play when you're young you know um going on a trail of vengeance <laughs> I mean, the funny the thing is it of course and it would be the same for most people you know it, when you think about yourself in in that kind of light it's faintly ludicrous you know but um you know you just got to sort of get your head down and get your head around what might be motivating a character like that and <clears throat> root it in some sort of reality um to do it but I just thought it was very exciting and and fun script you know and how did you go about preparing to play the character and I wondered if you also took any inspiration kind of from other films of this genre of this ilk I was maybe thinking of like Dead Man's Shoes or you know other films that have that very similar like very rooted in kind of like a British uh grimy gritty reality um but yeah, yeah. that same kind of propulsion of you know the kind of revenge thriller yeah, uh, I mean, it's funny, obviously, after the film's made and stuff and people start drawing those comparisons, you go, oh, yeah, I can see that and whatever. And um, and when we were making it, we, he was talking a lot more about Get Carter, actually, Paul, um, which is a great movie, obviously. Um, but I was always with, you know, once you've got your head around what the story is and what the narrative beats are, you just got to think in terms of the character and it not being cliched or caricatured or, or stereotypical, you know, and, and I was lucky that you it sort of had the angle of his relationship with his son mm. and also his and the other men's, well, and everyone actually, uh, relationship with Norm and what that might be, because it was sort of ambiguous, the control that he exerts over, over everyone. Mm. And, um, kind of trying to build what the uh, what the unseen motivations for that level of rage and, and vengeance might be. Um, so I was just trying to do that really. And I, I, that's always the same way. I sort of draw from really weird places. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I'll, 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 not so much films that are of a similar type, but I'll go and look at, exhibitions and try and find you know sometimes it's quite abstract work that I go well where is that in here things that you can grab hold of in a second that will just trigger a thought or a feeling that you can then apply to a given a given scene mm -hmm. but it's you sound like such a wanker when you start <laughs> saying things like that Do you know what I mean it's true mm -hmm. but it's an hard thing to talk about acting without coming over like a tosser you know and I was thinking even, I mean, completely different role, completely different circumstances, but maybe there was just like a tiny common thread with your role in Happy New Year, Colin Burstead, Ben Wheatley's film, because yeah. that was also a character where you kind of um, didn't always necessarily agree with what he was doing, but you always had empathy with him. And I wonder if that's followed through into this role somehow, where like, even you see from his past, I mean, he was no saint himself and, you know, what has happened to him, but you still, because you see that love for his son and you kind of find that there is some motivation there that maybe you can empathize with and understand. 
Yeah. I mean, I hope so. I think that's just part of that same thing of not, you know, you're not playing Judge Dredd, you know, like you, you, you sort of got to root it in some sort of truth. For most people, whatever their actions are and however they end up behaving, it's normally comes from somewhere very deep rooted and, and maybe that has, that you can slightly empathise with, even the very worst of people, you know, if you know, the more you know about their history. Um, I feel very lucky, actually, that that's the way that people are responding to the film, because that's what I hoped they would get from it. And as I say, it's difficult to, to know that you're doing that or that you, you are empathising. I mean, Colin Burstead, me and Ben, you know, to a large extent, me and Ben are kind of very similar as people in in a lot of ways, in the sense of how we see the worst of ourselves. You know, we go like, oh, I'm such a idiot sometimes. And um, and Colin really is the manifestation of those. I was kind of the worst of us. <laughs> but we go, oh, I wish I wasn't. And we talk still now about, oh, I was being a bit Colin, you know. <laughs> Bit of a Colin, I really got the ump about this silly thing and made a lot of it and made it all about me, you know, yeah. when I should have been making it about other people. And, um, Colin's become a bit of a byword for your own <laughs> dickheadery, you know. But if you can relate to Colin, if people outside of me and Ben can see some good in him, then mm. maybe we're redeemable, me and Ben. There's a dickhead <laughs> in all of us, I think, yeah. <laughs> Always a bit Colin, all of us. Yeah. And, um, Tell us a bit about the actual shoot, because I was reading, you know, pandemic, low budget, God knows how many locations, setting fire to things, body parts, you know, and what was that all like? Uh, well, we were very lucky because we could go to work, you know, and most people couldn't. Um, so it was, you know, it, it, that really horrible, difficult time. It was like a mad treat, with, you know, to have that exceptional thing that for some reason the film industry was allowed, um, was pretty amazing. And, and there were lots of people on it that were, you know, friends of Paul, some amazing actors, but also some just really nice people who were, who were great to spend time with. Um, so it was difficult. I mean, that, well, I say that, but the other thing is, for all of the difficulty of shooting and masks and tests and all of that stuff, it means that a lot of outside distractions that you get when there's not a global pandemic, and I'm not suggesting that the global pandemic was a good thing <laughs> for filming, but like, you know, it was focused. And there weren't loads of people around and people like plunging into shop to wave at their mum and things like that. You know, it was... Um, so strangely, there was some sort of odd benefits to it. But yeah, it was, uh, I mean, it was a weird time for everyone, right? There was like a surreal experience every day for everybody. Like, what is this about? And, um, and I just felt very lucky that we were able to, to, to be working, to be around other fucking human beings, you know? Was there... Um... Um particularly challenging moment I mean I was thinking definitely I hate those waltz rides and when you're spinning I don't know how fast it was actually going um, yeah. but you know were there were hardest moments from the shoot that you know that were most difficult well that was all right for me poor Kevin Harvey it would have been more of a difficulty for me if it had been up high because I don't really like that but um Kevin really didn't like spinning you know and we kept having to do it over and over again and his performance in light of that you know is because it's much harder as well to play the victim than it is to play the aggressor. That's the truth of it. You know, you're the one playing all the screaming and the fear and all that. And really a lot of the time, if you're the aggressor, you haven't got to do very much for the audience to buy into what it is you're doing. So he had the difficult role there and he was having to overcome, you know, motion sickness or whatever. And was honestly, this sort of thing they say in, you know, making of, and you go, I bet that's bollocks, but it's absolutely true. He was throwing up into a bucket between shots. And um, and he still kind of gave it his all and like, you know, I think we shot eight or nine goes and it was full speed, the walks up, with a geezer spinning in it because the camera was in a fixed position inside the carriage or whatever as you call it. And um, 
and he was spinning it at full speed. So it was full wallop. I mean, I like waltzers, so it was sort of fun and crazy and cathartic for me. It was right at the end of the show. Mm. But um, difficult for, for Kevin. I was trying to think if there was anything else that was odd. I mean, yeah, no, not really. Uh, you know, it's hard making a film in three weeks. You know, now we're doing this bit. Now we're doing that bit. Jumping from scene to scene, emotion to motion, mood to mood. Um, but it's also fun and, and exciting and immersive. So it was great, really. No moaning from me. <laughs> I'm almost out of time. Just a couple of minutes left, but just very quickly, what do you hope people ultimately take away from watching it? I mean, because it does go to some dark places, but it's very edge of your seat, very immersive. Yeah. Um, and then just quickly, if you can say about um, other projects you're working on, because I believe you're doing, you've been doing some directing yourself. Yeah, I have. I mean, mainly I hope people are entertained by a ball. I think it's an entertaining, compelling, thrilling bit of cinema or film, you know. I, I, I think it's a good Saturday night. You know, it tears along. No one's bored watching that. Film. No, no, no. So that's good. Um, yeah, I've just directed a film, Clock and Luda. Um, so that was exciting. And I hope to do a bit more of that if I can. Sort of a little chamber piece. Again, we made it during the pandemic, but I wrote it not during the pandemic so it wasn't for that designed for that purpose mm -hmm. um and i think it's come out really well there's again really lovely performances in it certainly the actors have done a great job um so i want to do a bit more of that writing and directing and then i've just done a series about the murder of litvinenko which mm -hmm. is now fucking horribly more prescient than it was when yeah. we made it um and that'll be out on itv in the next couple of months, I think, with David Tennant playing Litvinenko and Marina Leveva, um, uh, Margarita Leveva playing Marina Litvinenko. Uh, and me and Mark Bonner, who's an old mate. So, yeah, I think, uh, I hope people enjoy that. Is that it? I think, oh, and I've just done a bit of a sitcom with Dylan Moran uh, for the BBC, which I think will be fun. That was kind of, I love Dylan Moran anyway, and it was a really funny script. So I hope that's good. Amazing. Um, and then I'm Peaky blinders, I think. My, my final Churchill is next week, I think. Been very busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am, I suppose. I mean, I spend a lot of the time sitting here in Antwerp, staring out the window, wondering why I'm not working. And then when I start listing what I've been up to, it sounds like I'm the biggest <laughs> man in showbiz, but yeah. it don't always feel that way, you know. Amazing. Well, it's been so great to chat to you. Can't wait for everyone else to yeah. see this film and also your future projects as well. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks very much. It's been a nice chat.